Welcome back to another edition of the Night Report Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Richie, this is going to be a basketball recruiting update. I think you all are going to really like this. We have some straight from the man himself audio of Dylan Harper updating his recruitment. He spoke with rivals and Yahoo Sports, uh, Kristen Peak yesterday uh, at the USA basketball camp, or maybe it wasn't yesterday, it was a couple days ago. Yeah. Uh, but the video was released yesterday, so we're going to go through that. Or actually play the audio on the podcast so you can hear what's going on. And if you are watching on YouTube, you'll see the interview. Um, and then we'll talk about this upcoming weekend because we had kind of touched on it at the end of the last pod, but we got the recruiting man himself here to kind of go a little deeper than what we talked about last time uh, to go over all these prospects, who's going to be on campus, what to think about, what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just start off right from the top. Let's just uh, let's pop that video on. Um, um, think we should watch the whole video or just the parts that pertain to what we'd be interested in? That's a good question. I'm going to say probably just the parts where we kind of care about okay. the rest. It's a, it's a lot of, uh, like no one really cares about the Indiana talk and like, yeah, so it's, and all it's, that. it's about a five minute video. He discusses kind of, you know, catches up with Kristen P cause he did a previous interview with her in July, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. she asked about all of his, uh, top five. So he talks about all those top five, and then she talks about uh, the uh, timeline for his decision. So we're going to start here because this is when he starts to talk about the recruiting process. And I'll just shut up, and after this part is over, we can kind of break it down. So, all right. Every player to you. Like McDonald's, yeah. Summit, that whole thing. Oh, well, start a little early. Okay, and you are still uncommitted. When I talked to you this summer, you know, you were, you were kind of coy, like, I might commit at the beginning of the season, I might commit during the season. Where are you in the recruitment process? Uh, I think right now I'm just more focused on my high school team, just making sure that, you know, they're prepared for the storm we're about to run through because this is not no regular storm like last year. We have more of a national schedule. So yeah. um, I'm mostly focused on that. And then probably recruiting-wise, probably it stays in the back of my head. But, like, I think when the time comes right, I think I'll, I'll know when. Is it stressful at all, this process been? Has it been uh, stressful? Time to time it gets yeah. stressful, like, the overthinking part. But, like, once you really like focus in on like your craft and just knowing that like if you do what you're supposed to do, everything else to take care of yourself, it yeah. gets easier. And let's talk about the three schools that. All right, that's the first part. All right, so what are you hearing here? I, I I'm hearing basically like it's something that's always kind of present, but he hasn't really sat down and figured out 100 percent like when he's going to decide what he wants. Blah blah blah. I think he kind of knows, but it's not something that he's really made a 100 percent locked in decision on. What's your read on it? Yeah, no, I think that's a pretty spot on. I think he, it still feels like he knows where he wants to go. He knows when he's going to do it. He's just not going to tell anyone. He's just going to keep it secretive, and that's that's fine. Uh, it kind of goes back to what we were saying before in previous pods. He wants his recruitment in his own hands. He doesn't want everyone knowing where he's going. He wants it to be a surprise. He wants it to be this. And in order to do that, you, you kind of can't let anything slip, and I think he did a pretty good job here of not letting absolutely anything slip. So, I agree. Um... The next part, he's going to talk specifically about Rutgers. He talks about Indiana and Duke first. I, me and Rich have already watched this interview once. I want you guys mm -hmm. to watch his facial expressions as he's talking about Rutgers here. And yeah. for those who are listening, you won't be able to see it. Uh, but those on YouTube, you will. Uh, we'll also post a link to the full video in case it's uh, choppy at all when we actually mm -hmm. put it up. Uh, but uh, here's his next part. He talks about Rutgers and where Rutgers stands in his recruitment. We each other. It's staff. actually ending the Indiana yeah. thing or whatever. To each other, it's like a big bond, a big family. With Rutgers, I mean, that's like your hometown school. Your brother went there. Everyone knows, you know, that they're right in your backyard. But what has been their message to you, and where do they stand in the recruitment process? Uh, probably when I went there, you know, they tell me all the time they're not recruiting me for my brother or the family background or because I'm from Jersey. They're recruiting me because of me, you know. And I think they've been there truly since my freshman year all the way up to now. So really, just. They're overall like pissed to me is really that we're recruiting you for you and no one else. I mean, your brother probably is in your ear, you know, trying to tell you to go there, right? Is he <laughs> trying to recruit you there? Or is he letting you do your own thing? He told me, you know, whatever decision I make that's best for me, he knows that I'll make the right decision. So he was just like, you know, I would love for you to go to Rutgers, but like wherever you choose, I'm always going to stand by you 100%. With Auburn and Kansas, I mean. All right, Rich, what, do you, what did you get from that club? 
Well, I mean, you see it in the beginning. He definitely does that little smirk when he's like, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, I talk about rockers. And like, mm. it's like, all right, <laughs> man, you are grinning. You're cheesing like hard. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, I mean, he said all the right things. He keeps saying the right things about rockers. Um, nothing specific really stands out, I would say. I would say it's just an overall, it's the same feel he's always had for the hometown team. Yeah, I think he had a hard time kind of, if, if you if you watch the full video, when he talks about Indiana and Duke, it's very like, matter of fact and mm-hmm. with with Rutgers he definitely showed more emotion he smiled a couple times he laughed yeah. he definitely had a smirk on his face when she started asking about it um I think those are the kind of things you have to pick up on when you're thinking like a sky is falling you know he mm-hmm. was supposed to do x and y and he hasn't done it yet I still think Rutgers is, is in the driver's seat here and it's just kind of more yeah. of a, a when than if but you know that's just from what I'm hearing and you know what I can gather yeah um the, the other thing I wanted to point out, like when you go to the beginning of the Rutgers quip, like everything's like a full yeah, quip, like straight on through. Other, like and then they ask about, oh, see that little thing? cut? See a little cut right there? Well, I wonder what he said in between that little thing that they kind of cut out. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, Speculation. Let's, uh, let's really dig into that. Oh, God. <laughs> Might not be enough oil, but it will be for right now. I wonder what could have been said that needed to get edited out of that video. Uh, hmm. No, maybe, maybe a, uh, Hey, don't ask me about Rutgers. I'm going there, but I'll, I'll tell you later on and give you the, the exclusive hmm. scoop. Hmm. I do wonder what could have been said. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. That part of our uh, podcast was sponsored by Reynolds wrap. Um, Reynolds wrap, your only <laughs> go to, um, tinfoil brand. I really know of, I don't know if there's another one, but there might be. There's probably another one, but there's none quite as good as Reynolds Wrap. Uh, just it holds the heat better than any others. It's thicker. It's more pliable. It's kind of the best aluminum foil on the market. And anyone who's at their local grocery <laughs> store and is looking to pick some up in the near future, make it Reynolds Wrap. Yeah. Um, let's talk about his timeline now. That's the final thing he closes out on in this uh, interview. That's yep. Four fourteen. We'll go four fourteen. The bill itself, yeah. Yeah, okay, well, oh, we didn't need to hear that part. What's your decision time frame? Like, what is going to go into this decision? I don't know. Honestly, like, right, like, right now, I really don't know. I think right now, focus on the high school season. But I think definitely, like, when it clicks to me, like, watching college basketball and just seeing everything, like, once I, like, truly know my decision, I feel like I know what's right. So you're going to wait, watch the teams this season, and maybe, I don't know, what are you thinking, like, springtime or sometimes after Christmas? Or what I are we mean, saying? It could be from after Christmas to after the season, right before the signing day, May. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think really, like, for the like, right when, like, yeah. I think, like, when my gut tells me to do it, I think that's when I'm going to do it. Okay. All right. Well, Dylan, thank you so much for being in the hot seat, answering yeah. all the questions. All right. So, to me, that doesn't sound like somebody who has a, a really lot of conviction on a timeline. And he, yeah. the thing I thought was key there is he says when he knows it in his gut, he'll know. Does he maybe already know it in his gut? I don't I, know. Yeah, I might think so. I, I also think like the fact like you, you kind of I don't want to blame Kristen there or anything, but like you kind of fed him like, oh, is it after yeah. the season? Is it springtime? Yep. And it's like I hate when people do that because like you want to hear his response. You don't want to give him a timeline where he's going to yes. just reuse it. Um, yep. But yeah, no, I do think I think he knows where he's going. Still, I don't think there's a question about it. I still think Rutgers in the driver's seat, and I think it's just a matter of when, not if. Yeah, and you're seeing other schools kind of start to fill up. We talked about it with Kansas getting a combo guard. We talked about it with Duke getting a shooting guard. Yeah. Obviously, you make room if the number two or number three kid in the country wants to come play for you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But that begs the question: you know, why do you take those other kids to begin with? Um, so. Timeline stuff, I truly think this could be a random, like, you get, you see a tweet that goes out that says, Dylan Harper's committing tomorrow, and Mm -hmm. it could be that quickly. I do think if he is going to commit to Rutgers in the near future, it's going to be within a week of his visit this upcoming Sunday, this upcoming weekend, Mm -hmm. because it's going to be, the night fest is going to be sold out probably, and I say sold out probably, I don't have any information specifically pointing to that. But I think that's going to be a huge, huge crowd there. It's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of energy. Then you're going to have the, the homecoming football game. It looks like weather mm-hmm. might kind of dampen that experience a little bit. But if Rutgers gets a big win there, that's an exciting moment. 
and everybody in that class is going to be on campus. Trey McKinney is going to be on campus too. So he's going to see that there's like, you know, a pipeline of future top kids from across the country want to go there too. Mm -hmm. I think everything's kind of pointing to this being the convergence point. So if there's not a commitment in the week after the official visit, I think then it might just, it's, you know, this, the marathon continues. Yeah. And I'm just looking at his uh, upcoming uh, gauntlet of a schedule. Uh, they actually have a scrimmage at Rutgers on December 4th. And then they play at Rutgers again, December 29th. So hmm. definitely, um, he's gonna he's gonna be at Rutgers quite a few times, and then once once the season starts, I don't think he makes any other visits. I think it's gonna be too jam packed between high school basketball, between maybe he'll make like a midweek visit. But the only place you can really make a midweek visit if you're Dylan Harper from Don Bosco and Ramsey, New Jersey, would be Rutgers. Yep, definitely tough once the basketball season kicks off to actually get a visit into other schools. On top of that, there's dead periods through a lot of that time frame in the basketball season. Exactly. Like I know over the holidays is a pretty extensive dead period. Mm -hmm. um, it's quiet periods where you can talk, but you can't visit. Um, yeah. So it gets tough once, uh, once the basketball season rolls around to actually uh, make these visits. Yeah. This uh, upcoming, um, I guess is a try scrimmage is going to be pretty cool at Rutgers. Actually. I don't know if it's open to the public or not, but um, it's December 4th versus Archbishop Wood, who has Joel Bathia. Yep. And St. Rose in Belmar, who has um, Gilhol, Gilhol, who just committed to Villanova. Yeah, they have. Uh, so I think you're talking about Hodge. Hodge, um, that's what I meant. Yep. Yeah, Matthew so Hodge. There's two yeah. Hodge brothers that are pretty good. I think the younger brother is actually even better than uh, yes. the older brother. So those are going to be uh, some really good games on campus. They're from um, Serbia, if I recall correctly. But they're playing for a New Jersey high school because mm -hmm. New Jersey is just, yeah different yep. level of basketball <laughs> yep absolutely so let's talk about this upcoming visit weekend craig and i touched on it in the last pod we've been talking about it for a couple weeks we have some locked in visitors this coming weekend yeah so let's go through them all Dylan Harper. three committed prospects <laughs> oh yeah we got bryce storch mm -hmm. from massachusetts class of 2024 we got lathan somerville from illinois class of 2024 four-star big man mm -hmm. and we got the man himself, number two prospect in the country, Rutgers commit, six ten and a half now. Wing, crazy, do it all. Stud Ace Bailey to be on campus for his official visit. Uncommitted guys, we got two of them. Five star, two thousand twenty four prospect, number three in the country. The man we were just speaking of, Dylan Harper. You guys know his resume. You guys know his pedigree. We don't really need to say much more, but he is confirmed. He's going to be on an official visit nope. starting this weekend. And then the class 2025 guy. This is kind of weird for those of us who followed recruiting for a long time, hearing that there's going to be multiple different uh, classes uh, <laughs> on campus for official visits. Um, Trey McKinney, five-star prospect out of Flint, Michigan. He, his connections are through Smoke Williamson, through the Family AAU program. He, I believe, is number 11 in the country. 11, 12, or 13. One of those. 11. You're right. No, you're right. All right. He's number 11 in the country. He is a wing. He's just a stud. Um, he's also going to be on campus. So this, in my opinion, is the biggest recruiting weekend in the history of Rutgers basketball. And for the old heads, we were going to talk about, you know, some visit weekend in 1974. You might be right. But in contemporary history, this is by far the biggest weekend in Rutgers recruiting history for the basketball program. Yeah. They have to blow it out, and I think they have. They picked the perfect weekend for it with Night Fest going on, homecoming going on. Um, still a time of the year where the weather's mostly good. Um, talk a little bit about this weekend, uh, what to expect for these recruits, and kind of give a little detail about each one of those guys if you can. Yeah, so just um, before we move on too far past that Team USA thing, I, I need to say it. it. It's kind of a sin that Ace Bailey wasn't there. Um, that just that kind of dampens yeah. my mood on Team USA so far, especially because what they finished fourth place, third place recently. Um, but yeah, anyway, besides the point, Ace Bailey's going to be on campus. Ace Bailey, longtime Rutgers commit at this point. Um, he's as solid as they could could be i know there was people freaking out because they're like oh my god what if like we can't hold him for that long he doesn't sign until november and it's like relax um obviously extremely solid solidly committed 
he's got a v- busy week coming up too. Talk about where he's going to be at before he gets so, on campus. Yes, I completely forgot about that actually. So I'm glad you brought that up. So Thursday afternoon, Thursday morning ish, him and Dylan Harper are going out to Las Vegas for the Coach Wooten 150 camp. Some of you might remember that camp as a camp that a certain Rutgers uh, signee actually dominated, but then didn't play at the NCAA level <laughs> in uh, Jaden Jones. So that's mm. it, it is what it is. But uh, there's a big reason why he, uh, he kind of kind of soared up the rankings. He was he proved it against the, some of the best of the best. And this weekend, it's the same thing. Like Bryson Tiller is going to be there. Um, Joel Bethia, uh, a bunch of other big name guys uh, throughout the country are all going to this camp in Vegas. And immediately after, those two are flying to New Jersey and going to an official visit for Rutgers. So that that's huge. That not only they're going to be hanging out again together, not only are they talking with each other every day, but now they get to go to another camp together and show who's the better prospect between number two and three, because the gap is like, maybe this, like, that's it. They're, they're so that's close. a tight, tight turnaround uh, from Vegas to, you know, yeah. where, where they're from to Vegas to back to Jersey mm-hmm. are both going to be at night fest on Friday. Yes. That is the expectation is that both of them will be there. Um, I don't know what time they're flying in specifically. I don't know if I'll ever get those details because I feel like that's <laughs> just like, on a need to know basis. Otherwise mm-hmm. I feel like some of us, some of, yeah, I shouldn't say us, some of you guys on the boards or listeners might be stalking the airports. So mm-hmm. it's probably better off that we don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's huge to get those two back on campus. Um, of course, Bryce Dorch and Lathan Somerville, it's been a while since I guess either of them has really been on campus. So it's just always good to get them back there. Uh, Lathan is, I don't even know how to describe him. He's not an old school big man, but he's built like an old school big man, but he has, guard traits too uh he grew up and well, i should say literally and physically grew up uh, as a guard and then just had a giant growth spurt and now he's a 6'10 240 center um he has dribble moves like a guard he can handle the ball if need be he can shoot he can score um he can kind of do it all and he was one of the big uh risers in uh, the eybl circuit this summer um so he's he's at number 101 in the country currently uh again committed nothing to worry about um other than uh bryce dorch bryce dorch will also be on campus he is a small forward slash power forward type um i know i compared him in the past to Mwat mag because he's just such a defender versatile guy just a, an overall like solid wing uh he also exploded on the eybl circuit this year um he went from averaging what was it in eybl i think he was averaging like nine or ten points a game and then he went to the peach jam and averaged like 14 15 a game uh, he also had a game where he had 24 rebounds, I believe it was, um, which is like an unheard of stat. <laughs> um, and, you, you know, Pykel sees that and sees a defender and he's like, holy shit, I don't care what his, what they say his ranking is. I want that kid. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's number 41 overall small forward in the rankings. He's not in the top 150 currently. Could be when it's all said and done. So that's, that's something to keep an eye on. Um, the only lone commitment that won't be there is Dylan Grant. Nothing to worry about there, just a scheduling issue, and I just realized I messed up. The 24 rebounds was actually for Dylan Grant, and I just mixed up Bryce Dorch and Dylan Grant's stats completely. But So just ignore everything I just said on Dorch. That was all about Grant. Dorch is all a similar type player, though. He is a 6'8", 190 forward. Um, I, haven't, I haven't watched his tape in so long. I, I, I can't remember anything about Dorch. I don't know if you know anything. No, just all right. On to the next one. The the, the uh, other five star on campus, Trey McKinney. I don't know how else to say it other than the kid's a five star, and it's self explanatory why he's a five star. Just watch his tape. He's disgusting at what he does. Um, shooting guard, six six uh, six five two oh five, number eleven in the country. This is all Coach Smoke. Um, I'm I'm making smoke jokes about um, about him all over the message boards. I'm like, oh wow, they're like, there's some smoke brewing here with this recruitment, like stupid stuff. But Coach Smoke is a legitimate recruiter. He is an ace recruiter, shark recruiter, whatever you want to call him. He's a great recruiter, and he's not only like closing down the state of Michigan, but he's actually like shutting out other Michigan programs. Like Michigan State and Michigan were kind of all over McKinney early on. I'd argue Rutgers is near the top right now. And I think after if they have a good official visit, which I mean, you can't really have a bad official visit. Um, I think Rutgers will be near, or if not at the top, when it's all said and done, come Sunday night, Monday morning, whenever they leave. So I I do think that Rutgers is in a great spot there, and it might just continue the trend with like, hey, we're gonna get a four star, four star, a five star. Oh look, another five star. 
And this is this is kind of what um, every Rutgers basketball fan has been waiting for. And you're finally getting it under Steve Peichel and crew, who not only did he build a great staff, but he's he's making this a program that's going to be a perennial power? Question mark? Exclamation point, maybe? Yeah, um, I totally agree there. And anybody who missed it, um, I'm sure you could find the full video online somewhere. Uh, we'll post it. Uh, Steve Peichel was at Media Day today. So uh, the Big Ten Basketball Media Day was earlier this mm-hmm. morning, at least day one of it. Um, somebody asked him, like, I believe it was the first question mm-hmm. was, you know, you guys have been recruiting at an unprecedented level. Like, what do you attribute your recruiting success to? And Peichel immediately talked about how good his staff was. So he talked mm-hmm. about how Brandon Knight had been with him for eight years. He's one of the best assistants in the country. He talked about TJ Thompson being one of the best young coaches in the country. He talked about Smoke Williamson being a great addition. Uh, I don't remember specifically what he said regarding Smoke. Mm-hmm. But that was the first thing he said when somebody, a national reporter, asked him about his recruiting. Um, so clearly he he has made an emphasis on not only attracting some of the best coaches, but it's very hard to keep an, an assistant like Brandon Knight in your staff for eight years. If you look at what he was doing before he oh, got yeah. here, he was climbing the, the, the coaching ranks pretty quickly. I know for a fact he could have taken a, uh, a head coaching job or two over the mm-hmm. past few years. He is being very selective with his career and I don't blame him. Like, might as well just stay under Pike until the right job opportunity comes. I don't think he's leaving Rutgers for an assistant role anywhere. Period. No. Yeah. Uh, I think he would only leave Rutgers for a very good, probably power five job. Mm-hmm. Not very good in the sense like he's only leaving for a blue blood, but he's not going to leave Rutgers to go coach at St. Peter's or I agree. You know, that's no, no, no shade to St. Peter's. I just mean like, it's gotta be some kind of school that, uh, that has some, you know, clout to it. Um, and not just one tournament run. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what, what else did you hear from uh, media day that surprised you? I know it was a lot of like the same stuff we've been hearing. Yeah. It's, it's nothing too surprising. I'm trying to pull up the video now. It's actually, they don't even have it up yet. Um, but yeah, no, it was a lot of basic stuff. Just asking him like, Oh, what do you think about your team? What do you think about, Oh, you, you keep talking about Andre Hyatt. Um, what do you think about him? Um, he, he just mentioned how he's the, what a six year guy this year. Yeah. Um, it's, it's almost exactly the same stuff he said to us on our local media day uh, last week. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing insane. And that's, that, that's kind of Pykele's MO too. He's not, he's never going to go out and say something that's going to go viral or anything like that. But, uh, no, I think he's just eager to get this thing started. I think, um, kind of a little bit of a disrespect to them for picking them 10th in uh, the big 10. I don't think that's going to be accurate at all, but this is just typical big 10 media, not, really following i guess the program i mean we follow it a little differently because this is our our main beat yep. um so i i just don't see this team being 10th in the big 10 i think they're a lot better than people are giving them credit for i think they're yep. going to be a uh, totally different team when it comes to tempo and speed and i think that's going to affect people i think we've seen it in the past with the michigan's always had those smaller guards michigan state's had those smaller guards and they've always been pesky and annoying and a pain in the ass to play against and now it's like Shoes on the other foot here. Now it's a totally yep. different Rutgers team. Not only are they shooting the ball well between Chole, between Griffiths, between um, Andre Hyatt, you know, Fernandes is a good shooter. Like they have a lot of shooting too. And I, I think this team is going to surprise some people this year. I, I don't think 10th is uh, anywhere near accurate. I'd probably say maybe 7th or 8th, which is pretty good. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. That's, that's one of the things, a few of the things I kind of, in my mind, they're, they're not any different, but it's when you say it to a national audience versus say it to, you know, your own beat reporters, I think it's different. Mm-hmm. So yeah. three things that stuck out to me. One, it shouldn't be a surprise, but Mike said, if I know one thing about this team, it's going to play defense. And you guys who've covered me, you know, that's mm-hmm. something that we always emphasize. So I think he knows how to get guys to be better defenders than they would be without his tutelage. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing I thought was uh, important is he said, the, the most athletic team he's had. Like he's going to be able to do things that they weren't able to do the past few years. He also said it's the deepest team he's ever had where, you know, he said, I think we could play 11, 12 guys this year when I don't think we could have done that last year. Yeah. Or he said that in the past. So, I, I mean, those are really high. Pra- that's a lot of praise 
for mm-hmm. Michael to put into his team uh, with the last two things. And I think we all know that his identi- identity has always been based in defense, but for him to you know be confident that he'll get these guys playing mm-hmm. defense at a high level is always a good sign because we lost, you know, we got Mag coming back off an injury. He's not going to be a hundred percent for a bit. And we lost the best defender, arguably in Rutgers basketball history and Caleb McConnell national, yeah. you know, national defender of the year. So, uh, you, you worry that we'll take a step back, but I think because it's such a, an emphasis that Pykele puts into the program, I don't mm-hmm. see this team taking a huge step back defensively, but it won't be as good as last year. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Um, defensively, the I feel like Griffiths has to learn a little bit more defensively, but he's going to probably be the leading scorer, so you can't really take him off the court. Um, I've said that before, so I'll say it again. He's, he's that good of a scorer. Um, Cliff, great defender in the paint. Um, can't really guard perimeter, which I don't expect him to either, so it doesn't matter. Um, Hyatt, I think Hyatt's a little bit un- more underrated than people are giving him credit for as a defender. I think he's a decent defender. I don't think he's Caleb McConnell good. I don't think he's Malat Mag good, but I, I think he's up there still. And then uh, the newcomers. It's really on the newcomers to be good defenders, and that's that's where like a guy like Michael James comes, or Michael Davis comes in. Um, he's he's just been ferocious. Michael's not compared him officially. I don't think he's compared him to Jake, Jacob Young, but I compared him to Jacob Young. Um, I think he's just a younger version uh, of Jacob Young. He's he's a pest. He's a pain in the ass to go against. Um, you could see in some of the clips we posted and him and Derek Simpson going one-on-one in the middle of practice. Um, and you could just see he's just quick as hell. Even if like he misses a step or two, he easily can catch back up with that speed. Um and then the rest of the guards, like I think Austin Williams is a pretty good defender. I think he'll be underrated, and a lot of people are just completely ignoring him, even though he averaged, what, 19 uh, a game last time he played. I, I think he'll be a good scorer, a good defender. And then Jeremiah Williams, God forbid you can get a waiver there. He's your best defender by far. Like, So there's defense there. Yeah, it seems like Jeremiah Williams is a bit of the secret weapon, uh, better than anybody expected him to be uh, yeah. when Rutgers landed him. Regardless, whenever he ends up uh, playing for Rutgers, he'll have two years of eligibility, which is huge. huge. Um, yeah. uh, I'm re- I'm really excited we'll for this team this year. I'm ex- if you kind of don't know already, we lined up some of the the big events coming up for basketball. We got Night mm-hmm. Fest this up- upcoming Friday, uh, Friday the thirteenth. Uh, the following Saturday, October twenty first, is still tickets available for the Rutgers St. John's scrimmage. That'll be yes. in Queens. Uh, it'll be uh, yeah, Carnesecca Arena, but it'll be all the proceeds will go to the V Foundation, and oh, yeah. uh, that's obviously an, an awesome cause. Uh, November 6th is opening night for Rutgers basketball, Rutgers mm-hmm. Princeton. That'll be at the Cure Arena in Trenton, New Jersey. This game starts at 7 p.m. I got some, some notes on that game. We've already Ooh. talked about this. Number one, the basketball game is one of the only games that you can still get a reasonably priced ticket for. Uh, for Rutgers basketball this year. There's still plenty of tickets available. Uh, the tickets are being sold through Princeton, so uh, you can you buy them through the Rutgers website, but the, they're the de facto home team for this game. So if you still want tickets, you can still get tickets in the lower section. I think they're like 35 bucks each. It's it's a steal, because if you go on to SeatGeek, uh, which, if you haven't already, sign up for SeatGeek, because if you use the, the promo code Rutgers Rivals, you'll get $20 off your first order, uh, and that's the only place you can get Rutgers uh, basketball or football tickets uh, in terms of the resale market. So if you go on to SeatGeek, you look at the ticket prices for Rutgers basketball this season, your jaw is going to drop. Uh, they are sold out. Like That's another thing Michael said. They've sold out basically all their tickets for the entire season. Um, so if you want to go watch a Rutgers game, you have your only choice for a reasonably priced ticket if you don't have season tickets already, if you haven't already purchased your tickets, is the opening day. Uh, the second note I have is that the Rutgers Alumni Association will be hosting a pregame happy hour at Trenton Social, which is basically across the street from the arena, uh, starting at 5 p.m. that day. You don't need to sign up. You don't need anything. You just go to Trenton Social. It'll be fun. A uh, couple hours, you know, there'll be raffles and stuff like that, from what I understand. So that's the place to be. Um, you know, have a few drinks, get rowdy. Uh, before the Rutgers Princeton opening day game. That'll also, if you're watching at home, it'll be on Peacock. Richie and I will both be at that game, so we won't be able to do our uh, doc stream. You know, yeah, we won't be able to do our, our Manny Cast style stream for that game, but that is something we plan to do in the future. Just not, we don't have any locked in dates yet. 
Mm-hmm. So those are the two notes I have on that game. Those are the dates you need to know for Rutgers basketball in the near future. Richie, you got anything else uh, before we head out today? Uh, no, the one thing I do want to uh, talk about is a recruit that we haven't talked about at all today so far, and that'd be Nigel James. Um, oh, yeah. He was on, yeah, he was on campus this past week, and he's a 2025 guard. He's from the New England area. Um, previously going into this visit, I kind of had him leaning elsewhere, uh, most likely Providence, because Providence has a new head coach, some new recruiting juice, trying to get things started. Um, like I said, he's a New England kid, originally at Cushing Academy in Massachusetts, but transferred to uh, Long Island Lutheran this past off season. Um, he's, he's definitely an, a name to keep an eye on. I think Rutgers did some really good, uh, uh, catching up this past weekend. Um, he's, he's a little smaller guard too. He's back into, uh, I know we were talking about before, like Pykele had Paul Mulcahy, had Geo, had uh, K.O. McConnell playing point guard at one point. And these guys are all 6'4 and up. Now it's a complete switch in um, offensive dynamics, too, because you're getting smaller, quicker, faster guards. So that's where Jermichael Davis, Noah Fernandes, and now potentially Nigel James, um, uh, just making this a smaller, quicker backcourt. Uh, I would definitely keep an eye on him. We'll have an article on him later today from our uh, basketball recruiting analyst, Zach Smart. He got some quotes from him. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of a preview, he just he said he basically, I, I like Pykele's system. I like the way they run their their, their game. Uh, I just kind of envisioned myself being a leader in there and playing the way I already know how to play. It wouldn't be much of an adjustment at all for me. So it's like, that's, that's the new age basketball is the quick, faster, up-tempo game. And you're seeing recruits talk about it now too, so. Uh, the other school to keep an eye on here uh, would be Syracuse, and then even UConn starting to show some interest. So I think those New England schools are definitely going to play a factor between um, UConn and Providence. UConn hasn't offered yet, but they did go uh, send an assistant to go see him recently. He has one more visit, I believe, to Marquette at the end of the month, but then that will be it for him. I'm intrigued to see if he makes a decision after that or not. He said, he, again, another kid that doesn't really have a timeline. But uh, it definitely sounds like Rutgers made up some significant ground this uh, this weekend, so I would definitely keep an eye out on uh, Nigel James. Awesome. Yeah, he's a, a kid who in the class of 25, Rutgers was in on early. Mm-hmm. I think anytime Rutgers is recruiting a kid, you kind of have to throw recruiting rankings out the window because of course, if you look at a guy like, uh, you know, let's say Nicolo Bundolo, Nico Bundolo, yeah. sorry. Who was unranked when we offered him? Now he's you know top thirty in the country, top thirty five. Something like that. Yeah. Nigel James, I don't think he's very highly ranked right now, but if they're really into him, Pike has the the track record that shows that he'll probably be pretty highly ranked by the end of the the process. Um, same thing for you know Dylan Grant. He was pretty he was unranked when Rutgers started mm-hmm. recruiting him, and now he's in the top one thirty. You know, Lathan Somerville took a huge jump. Obviously, Ace Bailey took a huge jump. Dylan Harper took a huge jump. There were no names, but uh, so exciting stuff. Class of 2025 is off to a good start, even though there's not any commitments yet. They have uh, had a lot of really highly ranked kids on campus or planning to be on campus because there's a few more as those visits approach. Uh, we'll, we'll get into those guys more. There's a bunch of top 50 kids from the class of 25 mm-hmm. planning to take official visits between now and the end of the basketball season. So stay tuned for that. Um, off the top of my head, there's at least four that I can think of that are scheduling um, or um, planning to be on campus for official visits. Trey McKinney, check. Darius Acuff, yeah. uh, Brandon Stores was obviously on campus already. Yes. Jalen Hale, Harrell was on campus already. Mm-hmm. Um, His was unofficial, though, for what it's worth. Yeah, Dorian uh, Jones is a kid from Cleveland who's in the top 30. Oh, yes. Keep an eye on him. He'll be uh, next month, actually. Yep, he'll be on campus November 10th. So this, man, basketball has it rolling right now. So I'm yeah. excited. You're not kidding. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some news this uh, next couple months. Yep. Uh, alternatively, we will have a Michigan State writer on this week for the Michigan yes. State preview. That. Uh, visitor list will also beef out for the football program. I know we didn't mention them uh, at all in terms of the visitor list. You're starting to put that together. Mm -hmm. Uh, Exciting time for football too, because uh, if Rutgers takes care of business this weekend, they're one win away from a bowl. Uh, So exciting time for a lot of different reasons. Um, I want to shout out a couple sports programs to at Rutgers. I want to shout out uh, Rutgers volleyball. 
Uh, if you guys follow Huge. Rutgers Volleyball, when they joined the Big Ten, they were probably the worst program in uh, Rutgers or at Rutgers. They had, you know, I think they literally in the first three years of the Big Ten, they lost every single Big Ten match. Um, the growth in that program has been substantial. They just had their first ranked win in program history, or at least, mm -hmm. in, you know, if it's not program history, it's since they joined the Big Ten. They beat Minnesota this past weekend. Shout out to them. I want to shout out the field hockey program. They had a couple big wins recently. They beat uh, ranked Michigan. They also beat Monmouth, who's a pretty good program. They are now up to 12-0 and on the season. I don't know what they're currently ranked, but they're in the top 10. They're one of the favorites mm -hmm. for the national championship this past year. Uh, Mary the Savico is doing a great job there. Everybody thought this would be a down year for them but they have shown that that is not the case. So big shout out to those two programs because uh, they're doing great things. Uh, it's kind of all I got. Oh, 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 one more thing, one more thing. Huh? Uh, Scott Goodale put out a boom tweet this morning. Oh, forgot about that, yeah. We do not know who the, who the commit is, but it is a commitment that will be announced soon. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, Scott Goodale, the wrestling coach, anytime there's, usually it's a commitment, He'll put out a tweet that just says boom. Sometimes mm -hmm. it'll be all caps. Sometimes it'll have 10 exclamation points. Sometimes it'll be one. I don't think we can really judge the level of recruit based on the capitalization or the punctuation of a tweet, but this was just a boom, uh, proper case, capital B, lowercase rest, and an exclamation point. So stay tuned to the boards because we'll have that commitment available to you when it gets announced. But that is at this point. Finally, what all I have. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, I'll just touch on that one a little bit. Um, it does sound like it will be a uh, out of state kid from a local state, maybe uh, I don't know uh, Pennsylvania. So uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm assuming usually it doesn't put out the boom tweet unless the kid's getting ready to announce shortly. So I would assume that's probably going to come out in the next couple hours. Maybe sometimes these kids are weird. Maybe it'll be a day later. So who really knows? But uh yep. yeah definitely um definitely seems like a good uh good addition absolutely all right guys for me and richie this has been another edition of the net report podcast signing off